Coming closer to home, Charles Cox is with me in studio to scrutinize the PPC Afri Sam merger that we heard about back in December. Good to have you with us in studio. Thank you. Uh, it does seem, looking through your analysis, that the key gripe and the key issue here for that investors need to be cautious of is PIC's involvement. Yes, you know, when the whole fight started at PPC, PIC was very quick off the mark to say, we have full confidence in this board. Mm. And we who watch directors carefully and watch shareholders carefully said, wow, this is very fast. This is very specific. But we, you know, kind of put it away. And suddenly now when we start, talk about, start to hear talk about AFRISAM and PPC together, and we know the very bad history that the PIC has had with the AFRISAM investment. Tell us about that because I think some investors aren't familiar with that story. Well, I'm not going to go into any politics or any suggestions of what could have been happening. But the facts are that the PIC made an investment in AFRISAM on behalf of the Government Employees Pension Fund. Mm. And very soon after, the investment was proven to not have been the best choice in terms of the performance of AFRISAM. Mm -hmm. A number of things went wrong. PIC actually increased its investment and sitting with over 60% of AFRISAM at the moment and has obviously been looking at a way to you know kind of adjust its holding maybe get rid of I'm guessing now an investment that is not particularly proud of PPC is a very good company mm. has been for many many years and you can see the logic of PIC deciding that PPC could be such a new partner could be somewhere that they could actually deposit, if you will, the AFRISAM investment. But it just doesn't feel right that in all the struggle at PPC, in the process of possibly having a new board in the next, say, 15 days, mm -hmm. a transaction like this comes up that might very well have been okayed by the previous board, or at least considered in principle. We don't know. And that's one of the other problems. We don't have enough information to be able to take a really strong view, but we are raising the questions because we need them answered. What has been the PIC's role in the whole AFRISAM vis-a-vis PPC transaction? To what extent did the old board give some commitment or some uh, memorandum of understanding that they would be taking this deal forward? To what extent would the new board be able to really decide from fresh whether they like the transaction? Because the transaction itself doesn't really make strategic sense. Mm. PPC would probably be more interested in a large exposure to the rest of the African continent yes. than the South African. Because our market in cement isn't exactly, boom, exactly booming. We have effectively four large companies and a possible fifth entrant soon, maybe even a sixth through the Chinese. Why would you want to be so large in a market that isn't necessarily growing the way you want to be? So in other words, you're trying to tell us that the, PPC, the PIC excuse me, might be trying to let go of every SAM and uh, smoothly just transfer some of those assets onto uh, PPC. Well, the, the concept is a merger. So the two organizations would then become one. And obviously the PIC's shares held in the combined entity mm -hmm. would be you know, at a level that compensates them for the price that they get for every SAM. If you were a PPC shareholder, what particular questions would you be uh, striking or, or, or issuing to the board in the next meeting, perhaps? I'd like to know at what stage PPC's old board was told of this possible merger. I'd like to know whether the PIC's role in this whole, let's call it a, a boardroom struggle about PPC, has been completely above board, or whether they had an agenda knowing that they would br want to bring AFRISAM into the picture at some stage. I'd like to be sure that strategically the decision to merge with AFRISAM is good for PPC and its shareholders specifically. What about the cash consideration that might potentially be paid? Quite frankly, the way that the deal is structured is so unclear that we can't comment on that yet. It probably is going to be largely a share transaction, share-based transaction. Um, but Clearly, if you pay a very high price, or in the merger process, pay a very high price for every SAM, and it isn't a very good strategic decision, that's very, very bad for PPC long term. For PPC, are there any benefits for them to merge with every SAM? Look, we are 
corporate governance people. We mm. can't necessarily give you a kind of a uh, investment analyst view, but to be too large in a slowly growing economy can't be good for anybody. For the new chief executive that's also been appointed at PPC, this must certainly put him in a tight position. Huge pressure. I'm sure that um, his election as CEO was agreed to by PIC in some manner. And so therefore maybe an allegiance is uh, owed there. I hope not. But yes, it must be quite difficult for Daryl. Just to close off with, uh, we do have Theo Boeta joining us later mm. on in the show. He'll be discussing Stein of Steel yes. uh, with uh, Pep Corps. Uh, maybe if we get commentary from you with regard to the level of shareholder activism in the country. Is, is there enough? You raising red flags about PPC, mm. Theo raising flags about Stein of Surely we need more of this. We need more Theo Buertas. <laughs> but now remember, I'm, I'm, I'm really not, it's not fair that I say that because he and I are partners in, in some um, businesses. The, the concept of shareholder activism has overseas been that a large shareholder comes in and kind of pulls a company apart and then gets a benefit and then gets out. I'd like very much for more governance activism. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what Theo is. He's looking at the principle of what should you be doing and why aren't you doing it, rather than saying, I'm going to rip this company apart and they'll make mega bucks. In mm. fact, he's not in for the money at all. So if you ask what activism we need, not lots more governance activism. Shareholders actually voting actively. We're trying to make it possible for them. There's a thing called proxy view that's almost free of charge. They can have a view, look at uh, Theo's views and then uh, vote uh, commensurately. Shareholders are not honestly voting as much as they, so as they should. They're not speaking up as much as they can, and that's quite sad. So that would also be a great thing if that could be improved. Governance activism. Well, you've raised yes. the red flags, and hopefully some of the investors are watching and listening today. We do hope so. Thanks Shal, very much. Shal, thank you so much for joining us today. Such a pleasure having you in. Thanks to uh, Shal Cox, who is, at, uh, who is principal at Ratings Africa.